patient ventilator asynchrony refers to a mismatch between the patient inspiratory time, the, his neural inspiratory time, and the time of the ventilator, which is a mechanical breath. So uh, there are two types of asynchrony, asynchrony of the time, which is called phase asynchrony, and asynchrony in flow, when the flow provided by the ventilator does not uh, correspond to the need of the patient. So in terms of phase asynchrony, uh, we distinguish the asynchrony when the ventilator starts later than the patient of the effort, or when the ventilator starts by itself. It's called auto-trigger. At the end of the breath, there is a premature uh, termination of the mechanical breath or delayed uh, termination of the mechanical breath and during the uh, breath there is not enough flow or too much flow and this is called flow asynchrony. Well the impact is, uh, is not well understood. On the short term of course if we have a lot of asynchrony the patient is very, can be very uncomfortable, and then it impacts the tolerance of the treatment. So the most important is that when the patient wants to fall asleep with his uh, NIV ventilator, that it's comfortable. If it's not comfortable, the patient will not tolerate. So this is very uh, short-term uh, uh, view. Now, on long-term and on efficacy, honestly, we don't have any data showing that patient with high index of asynchrony have worse outcome than patients with less asynchrony. Well, it's impossible that the patient is totally uh, well synchronized, 100%. So we have to accept some kind of asynchrony. I don't know how much is acceptable, and it's probably different according to patients. I mean, easy to ventilate patients such as UPD or obese patients, usually we target 80% uh, of synchronization. Now, if we have more severe patients such as severe COPD or severe neuromuscular patient, then we accept a high level of asynchrony and sometimes it's a goal to provide a mandatory breath, meaning to support the patient fully, which means 100% of asynchrony. Well, probably the most common is ineffective effort. So uh, uh, ineffective effort probably should be uh, avoided as much as possible. The second one usually is double triggering. Double triggering is also very common and it's very uncomfortable. So that's why we should try to avoid the double triggering. Auto triggering is a third one, is less common, less important, but still can be quite uncomfortable. So if we see some, we have to try to solve it. Well, most of the time, uh, the first step is to look at leakages. If we have a lot of unintentional leaks, then this creates a lot of asynchrony. So the first step is to try to prevent and to correct leakages. Then the second step is to look at upper airway obstruction that per se creates some asynchrony. And the third step, if we don't have leakage and upper airway obstruction, is to adjust the ventilator settings, mainly the inspiratory trigger and the cycling criteria. Yeah, the, the, very recently there was a, a paper about PVA, which is great. It's published in Thorax this year, in 2019. And the first author is uh, Jesus Gonzalez. So it's a group of experts that determine how to read the, the, the data from the software and how to classify the PVA. So it's, it's a great paper, and I would suggest that you read the, the, the electronic supplemental material, which is uh, very informative on this aspect.